Okay, I think we're live. Hello and welcome. Today we have an incredible show, and I do mean that. Uh, know that it will be a long show because I have lots to talk about, plus I missed the last two days. Uh, I'll try not to, and usually these will be much shorter, around 10 to 15 minutes. But today we're talking about 40, and uh, I'll never waste your time. This is very important to me. That's why I call it a show, is because I myself try not to waste any of my time. So the last thing I would, I would do what we try to do is to do that with you. So I always curate. This is always curated. And um, I'm proud of this. Plus, this is like a montage of cool stuff I've gotten from uh, a perfect planet. Perfect for background. And uh, so, yeah. Man, I'm excited today. A lot of good stuff. I've got four 10 out of 10s. Now, I score everything I do. 10 out of 10 for me does not mean it's perfect. Very important. It usually means that you've achieved everything you wanted it to achieve. So if, if, a, if a movie is meant to make you cry, or meant to destroy you, if I am destroyed and there's no obvious flaws, it's a 10, you know? Um, same thing with it, its it's consistency, right? So if, if there's no flaws and you, you nailed everything, you get yourself a 10. Two TV shows, uh, two TV episodes specifically, and two movies got a 10. I saw three movies. I'll show you right now, but that will be the main event. Before that, I'll talk about some badass tattoos. I'll talk about Yakuza 3. I got a insane side quest that shows transgender representation. It blew me away, and we'll have to get through that to get to the main event of the films. And trust me, it is worth it, though. And uh, I was blown away by it. And plus, because we're going to watch that, I'm also going to show you uh, somebody uh, getting hit in the balls in Yakuza, just to counterbalance the, uh, the side quest. And uh, I'll also show you a cool knockout from UFC. I got, I got, of course, the movies to talk about, a little bit of TV to talk about, and there's something else. No, but pretty much the meat of it will be the films. Because trust me, I got a lot to say, especially because they are tens, you know? And they are, for all intents and purposes, underseen. And speaking of which, I'll show you right now. So the three movies, anything for Jackson, which by the way, was the first one we added to the list. Because I made a list, right, and I had a few open slots, so we had to do some live research. I did this live uh, a few, a few, a week back, and anything for Jackson is the only one in caps because of it. We looked it up, gotten on Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes, ninety-eight percent, and the score was like seventy-four, insanely high. So I was like, I was forced to, I wasn't forced. I was like, hell yeah, like this is what I mean. This is the kind of movie that would not be on the list and has to be because it's like unknown, underseen, and whatever. So it's a horror movie. Again, don't take it from me, 98% should be enough for you guys to be like, damn, especially if you like horror movies. Second of which, in and of itself, okay? 100%. You never get 100%. Never. Ever. This this should be an automatic watch. The less said about this, the better. I will have to talk about it later on, but that's why I'm showing it to you now. And by the way, 8.3 on IMDb, again, it's impossible. It's, it's, it's extremely rare. This would mean that this film, which is technically not a film, would be in the top 250 films of all time because it starts at 8 8.0 and then it goes up from there so this would be technically a top 250 films of all time judged by imdb so again i should not sell you on this trust me this sold me trust me it, sh it should sell you but of course we'll talk about it at the end the third movie the one and only ivan disney live action i put this on the list myself because i know i would like it it's like a tearjerker it's a bunch of cg animals who can speak um, with some human characters, of course, Brian Cranston being the main actor. Um, I got the audio library here. I don't know why it's slowing down. Okay, there you go. So yeah, one of those three, th two of those three movies got a 10 out of 10. It should be obvious which ones, but I just wanted to show you that, so we'll talk about that at the end. Before that, I got a few things to show you. First of which is a UFC knockout. Now, if, by the way, I forgot to turn on chat, very important. Do. Oops. No, no. Oh my god, what happened? What happened? We lost the audio library. We lost it. <laughs> we gotta get it back. <laughs> this is why it's live, people. This is what happens. Audio library. Dear lord, can't believe that happened. Um, right here? Okay. See this, now you're going to see how I, how I do it live. I do ambient, right, just to not risk it. And I also do royalty free, but right now I'm at a loss as to where that is. Everything is screaming at me from below. Let's put that at 100. We go down, because these I've played a lot, so let's just jump in a random song here. Here we go. We made it. Apologies for that. Stuff happens. That's how it goes. 
Okay, so I got a UFC knockout to show you guys. Dear Lord, that seems louder to me than the others. I don't know why. Oh, my bad, my bad. I'm gonna turn that down. Sorry. I did turn that down before it restarted again. Sorry for that. On the fly. Mistakes happen. Moving on. So I'm gonna show you some badass tattoos in a sec. But first of all, I wanna show you a UFC knockout. Now, if you are prone or against violence, uh, do not look for 15 seconds. That is all. Uh, 20 seconds, okay? Here we go. Boom, right now. This happened yesterday. Saturday. I got a show usually every Saturday. This is a flying knee. It's very rare you get a flying knee knockout. Oh, I don't want volume on this. But it couldn't be more perfect. Like he, he leaned in, into it and the other guy leaned into the knee, creating a perfect knockout. And it, this guy's a legend. Like he's one of the best fighters on the planet. And to see him go out like this, that's how it goes. Plus he's old, so like this could be his retirement fight. But yeah, that was a crazy knockout. So yeah, that was UFC. Uh, I see UFC like every week, so if I do show you something, it's either a knockout or something that is beautiful. And trust me, I wouldn't waste your time. Badass tattoos. Uh, the main event was Alexander Volkov. He won. It's where they were heavyweights. It's this guy right here. Boom. Okay. He won. But his tattoo, man. His tattoo blew me away. And I'm going to show you Yakuza in a second. And the beautiful thing about Yakuza is that they have these giants like him, badass tattoos in their back um, that represent who they are as a warrior and to see this like I've never seen uh, such a tattoo in UFC like they have Connor right here Connor has a classic gorilla on the chest with the tiger but man to see one like this the Yakuza style taking the whole back was really nice speaking of which just to show you see this is Kazuma Kiryu which I'm going to show you in a sec and uh, Majima also has a great one in the game see and they represent he's the dragon of Dojima it's like part of his character by the way this song a little slow let me skip it do, do, do. You will come back. That thing will flash if I don't pause it. So there you go. It's cool animals I will showcase after when I talk about the films, of course. Sun Awakening. That's the problem with ambient, right? You never know if you're going to get slow and trotting or cool and impressive. And uh, finally, in terms of news and in terms of stuff to show real quick, James Gunn. James Gunn is the director of Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2. And uh, the Suicide Squad, the upcoming one, not the old one. The, the one that's coming. And he, he wrote this tweet, which was... Very nice and it made me think about stuff so he answered the guy like you know how much did warner brothers uh you know take control over the film and you know suicide squad is fully finished and cut and i made every single choice which is crazy and they never once even slightly interfered they gave me very few notes they were usually good and minor and i took them if i wanted to and if i didn't uh and didn't if i if i didn't want to Warner's was creatively amazing. Man, so I was already extremely hyped for the Suicide Squad. Because it's like 20 characters, so you know half of them are going to die in like brutal fashion. Uh, Harley Quinn's in there, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's going to be exciting, especially reading this. Because that might be the s smallest problem that Marvel has, is that they do exude a lot of control over the, uh, where the trajectory of the story. Meaning, even if you have a single film, it builds to the next one, right? So, so Kevin Feige, who's the producer of everything, controls essentially where all the stories end up. So it could limit control. It could. There's no proof of that, but still. And uh, he said himself, like on Guardians of the Galaxy, he's pretty much in control. But still, you gotta you gotta place characters where they need to be for like Avengers and whatnot. So, uh, so yeah, this was extremely refreshing to read, and it makes me so excited. For the Suicide Squad. And finally, I'm going to show you some Yakuza stuff. Because this blew me away. This blew me away. Um, okay, I'm going to put the balls right over here. So yeah, right after this, I promise, I'm going to show you I'm going to show you somebody getting hit in the balls in glorious fashion. But before we do that, we got to get through this. Because this blew me away. Okay. This is transgender representation in a game. Again, the music shut down. I don't know why. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on back. Um, so this is a side quest. You have every Yakuza game, this is Yakuza 3, has like 50 side quests. That's usually the, the number. Uh, they range from anything. Anything you can think of happens, right? Hence why they could do this. So you meet this girl at the bar. Trust me, this will be quick. But I promise you it's worth it. Because I, I've never seen this before. I've never seen transgendered representation in any game, period. Let alone respectfully done it's never it's never been done and 
I played Yakuza 3 10 years ago when it first came out. This is a remastered that came out last week. They remastered 3, 4, and 5. So you can buy those on PC or PS5. And uh, so I'm replaying through them because I'm still waiting for 6. It's brutal. And um, man, I need some water here. So you meet this girl at the bar. She is your massage parlor masseuse. Um, she, massage therapist is the word. They actually debate about this when they're talking right now. And this is all small talk, by the way, which is why I'm not talking about it. Uh, like right now, it's like she's explaining the difference between massage therapist and masseuse, which by the way is important to me because I work at a spa. That's my real job. Now, I, I usually go three times a week, but now COVID and whatnot. But that's what I do. I take care of the place. I take care of the spa. I grab the uh, dirty clothes and whatever anybody needs, clean towels, whatever, I take care of it. So that's my job. But so... So, yeah, so they're talking, and she, the whole point you're here is she wants to talk about a boy she loves, okay? And she needs somebody to talk to, so you can choose yes or no to listening to her talk about the boy she likes. And again, this takes a long time. This takes longer than you expect. And you have some decisions to make. So see right here, like, okay, I'll listen to whatever, you know, I'll, I'll give you advice if you need it. Okay, so there's this guy I'm really, really into. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, and then you ask what questions. These are the three questions you can ask. What's he like? What the, what does he do for work? What do you like about him? And you have to ask all three, period. And she pretty much seems to be talking about you. Like, oh, he's strong and stoic. You know, um... Anyway, she, she pretty much seems to be describing you. That's the, that's the mis misunderstanding here, okay? And again, this is just build up for later. And again, this takes a while. This is a long conversation. And she's like, okay, I gotta go pee. I'm out. Okay, she goes to pee. And then out of nowhere, your friend's in the bar. I don't know why he's here. He's creeping. He's like, dude, I think I think she's talking about you. I think she likes you, you know? Who, who she's talking about is you, right? So that is the misunderstanding. And uh, so you're like oblivious because your dude is badass but extremely dumb. Man, I hate this. Okay, it does take a few seconds, but music always does come back. I gotta, gotta remember. Okay. And these conversations take a while. And by the way, look at this. This is my favorite part. Again, we've been here for like five minutes. And this, I've been skipping, right? So this conversation is long. And if you're bored, you can just leave. You can just leave. So if you make the decision to stay, not only once, but twice, which I always do, it's a side quest. I'm going to get that XP. By the way, I did not know what was coming. Okay, right now, I'm not sure if I should tell him why I feel. Okay, I'm afraid, I'm afraid what he might say, okay? Well, you're an attractive woman. So, blue is us, white is her. Okay. Any guy would be thrilled to have you, whatever. You think so? Ah, oh, thanks. Okay, and here we go. But, okay, there's something I still haven't told you, Kiryu. What's that? Uh, and then she's shy, of course. I was born a man, okay? Wait, so you're... By the way, this line, like, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> For, for any game to go there, it's crazy, okay? So, wait, you're transgender, okay? Yeah. The fact that Kazuma knew that word was... Anyway, so then there's like a shock, like... <gasps> there's like a big sound effect. By the way, I should put audio here, my bad. So at least hear a little bit. So you can hear what it sounds like, kind of. Okay, so ever since I was a kid, I felt like a girl. But my whole life, I had boy parts. It was really hard for me to live like that. Doctors sometimes called it gender identity disorder. Personally, I don't like the word... By the way, my bad. I hate that I'm stopping in the middle, but we have to. There's music in game. Okay, so personally, I don't like the word disorder being used to describe who I am. And, and very important here, look at the camera, okay? It's panning slowly, the music has changed, and there's like a certain artfulness to this scene, okay? I see. Is it the same? Is it the same thing as being gay? This is what Kazuma says. Because he's as ignorant as anybody. And I'll tell you why in just a sec. It's different. Being gay means you're attracted to people of the same sex. Being trans means your gender identity is different than the sex you are assigned with, I, I believe. I missed the... Uh, I, gotta, I gotta make sure I get this right, because... I don't want to mess this up. I, I want to represent the game well. Anyway, it's different than the sex you were assigned at birth. There you go. Oh, I get it. That's it. That's all you need. You get it. You were born as a man on the outside, but on the inside you felt like you were a woman. I love Cosmo, dude. 
It's always open, open-minded, open to learn. That's right. I underwent gender reassignment surgery, so now my physical appearance appearance matches the gender I identify as. I'm a woman through and through. Very important. Even so, I'm terrified of telling him. I'm scared he'll completely lose interest in me. There's no way I can come out and tell him. It's funny, because I'm so in love, but so scared of being in love. By the way, she doesn't need to tell him. That's what's interesting about this whole thing. I'm sure this is really shocking to hear. It must be difficult to come to terms with. And then you get a decision as the player. The player playing as Kazuma, okay? Here's the thing. I, I chose no, not at all. That To me, it's obvious. Like. I knew this beforehand, this is no big deal, but for the intents of this recording, I did choose the other option just because I wanted to see how different it would be. But it is a bit difficult. I mean, it, it is for, for Kazuma, right? This is the first of hearing him, and he's a badass, like, period. To be completely honest, it is a bit difficult. And here he does say the same thing he would say if I chose the other option. Love is about accepting one another for who you are, it's not... Damn it. Sorry, I missed some bits here. Okay. Again, just anyway, it's not always easy to find someone who will. However, yeah, that's right. Connection, right? Everyone has obstacles they got to deal with. Yours are just a bit bigger than everyone, everyone else's. Ayaka, I can't tell you how he'll react, but know this: if it doesn't go well, it's not your fault. It just means you weren't compatible, or it just wasn't the right timing for either of you. That's all. Just keep on keeping on, and one day, you'll meet someone who's right for you. I sincerely believe that. And again, he still thinks that she's attracted to him. I feel a lot better about this now. No problem. Then you think she's gonna come fast, right? You think... Okay, I'm gonna tell Kentaro-san how I feel, so it's not you. N wait, who's Kentaro-san? Weren't you talking about me this whole time? Okay. Then she apologizes. Forgot to mention it. And then here's a... Another, like, shock reaction, right? And then back to normal Yakuza. So just to show you, right, the, the camera panning, the music, and the way it was written, which was, I mean, nothing is perfect, but in a, a video game trying to sh show the players, whoever they are, what being a transgender is, I couldn't ask for much better. I really couldn't. Like, I was, I was blown away by how much respect it gave the subject. And this is conservative Japan, okay? It's not that bad. It's not like Japan is like a they you know, penalize you if you're gay, right? But it's not like they're more conservative conservative than Canada or whatever country you can think of that is fully accepting of things like this. Um, so yeah, and then she leaves. Come by the masseuse. It'll be awesome. And here's the last part, and um, uh. where you tell your friend that no, it wasn't me. She was having a crunch a crunch uh, crush on. <laughs> Okay, here we go. There was another important detail. She's a trans woman who was born a man. He tells that to him. He goes like, what? Oh, come on, Kiryu. You don't have to make up something like that to cover your ass. It's okay if you got rejected. <laughs> which, which, is, uh, which is pretty good. Okay. So, and here's my favorite part of this whole thing, right? So this whole time, you thought she had a crush on him. He knows she's trans and used to be a man. Now, for all intents and purposes, fully a woman, right? And it, he really liked her. He was fully attracted to her. Yes, it really is too bad that she wasn't attracted to me, because in the end, I was attracted to her. And Kazuma was down to hit it. Which is, I mean, in this case specifically, of course. Because for all intents and purposes, she's a woman. And really, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter. And it doesn't matter to Kazuma, which I love. They made a choice, you know, the developers chose to represent transgender people respectfully. They chose to do it artfully with the camera sweeping, the music. And they chose to make Kazuma Kiryu extremely open-minded to the point where he would actually uh, go out with this woman, if given the chance. That's crazy. And it's all a side quest that you can easily miss, completely optional, and they, they go out of their way to make sure you want to hear this stuff. Because it is not given to you. You have to have a long conversation with this person before she even tells you her secret. And it's... Anyway, I, I respect it. I respect it a lot. And the fact that it's there blew me away. And uh, the, the crazy thing is, is this. Transgender rights 
have been in the public consciousness since about 2016. I looked it up. That's when the lawsuits about bathrooms came up. That's when the LGBTQIA plus movement really came about, where before it was just, you know, gays, lesbians, transgender. Um, and now, now we added some letters. We added some genders. This happened about five, seven years ago. This game came out in 2009. That's more than 10 years ago. So 11 years ago, 11 years ago, this game chose to show transgender people respectfully to the Japanese audience and of course the world audience, but this, this, is huge. this game is huge in Japan. This is the Grand Theft Auto of, of Japan. So in the same way we all play Grand Theft Auto, they all played Yakuza. So they made a choice to put that in the game because to one of the writers or one of the persons on the team, it mattered to them. And the way they did it was as good as can be, especially, especially in 2009. I cannot think of another game who even attempted to have a transgender re representation, let alone with that much respect. I said, I'm done on the subject. Thank you for your patience. I had to share it because it blew my mind. It blew my mind. And I love Yakuza so much. And I love Kazuma so much, this guy, right? Biggest badass in Japan. He's literally the strongest man in Japan. Not only does he raise small kids, multiple, but he's also pro, pro trans, pro open, pro whatever. I love it. He's an example to us all. And since I promised it, here is somebody getting hit in the balls. <laughs> I had to compensate somehow. The steam. You gotta love the steam. And you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> if I go heavy, I promise you, I will go light right after. There you go, that's some Yakuza goodness for you. Okay, finally, and now, I think we're, we're in the main event. It's main event time. And what a main event do we have? We're talking about the big three. Oh, I gotta turn off the audio, very dangerous. Oof, that was close. So I got this montage here while I talk about the films. Um, oh yeah, another small thing too I wanted to talk about, which was uh, small but fun. The, um, the learn that, yeah, if a black hole is large enough, apparently you can dive in the middle and survive. So I'm thinking in 200 years, people are going to be black hole diving. It's either, either you cross the other side or you die horribly, right? But it's such a, a cool way to die, just in a black hole. So yeah, in 200 years, we're black hole diving, son. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be cool. I found that piece of news really fun. And finally, the four 10 out of 10s I gave. Okay, very important. Uh, two of them are TV shows, so I'll go real quick. One of them is a perfect plant, a perfect planet. Uh, episode number two, which is called The Sun. I gave a 10. I gave a, a nine to episode one and three. So don't think they all get tens, but when they're perfect, they're perfect. And this is what I promise you will see. Okay, if you watch a perfect planet, these are not spoilers, I promise, but this is what you will see. You will see a magic camera that will catch a tiny bug with a relatively huge penis. You will see a cooler bull than the Minotaur. You will see one wolf versus 200 white hairs. You will see a zombie frog, a snake tornado, and finally the fastest ant who also happens to be armored. So the fastest ant on our planet is armored. <laughs> So, so yeah, trust me, a perfect planet, you cannot go wrong. These are clips I put together. Hopefully, I don't get banned or whatever for it. So that got a 10. The other episode that got a 10 is The Expanse. I'm not going to talk about it, but uh, too much. Episode 4, The Expanse, Season 5 got a 10. Uh, all the others mostly got an 8. But it's still, it's, it's the best sci-fi show on TV right now. I just want to confirm that. And now we're into the movies. We're going to start with the one that did not... Get a 10. I don't know why the music is not starting this time. By the way, I had a good song earlier. Let me find it. Doop, 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 doop. Never mind. Can't find it. We'll go here. The, um... Okay, so the three movies. The first one that did not get a 10 is uh, the one and only Ivan, which is the big Disney live-action film. I gave it an 8. Uh, I started the movie. I was looking for something fun. And I started the movie, and the gorilla talks to the camera straight up. It's the gorilla CG 
talking to the camera, so I'm like, oh man, I'm in for a good time. And uh, it's a true story about a mall back in the day, in the 80s, I believe, even could be older than that, that had a straight up circus within the mall. So if you went to that mall, you could go see a show that showcased a bunch of animals, a seal, an uh, elephant, uh, of course, a gorilla, a chicken, etc., etc. And the show is ran by Brian Cranston. It's a good movie, but because of Disney and the fact that it's based on a true story, um, they're limited in terms of how dark they can be because it is a dark story. Like, a perfect example is the seal. Of course, all these animals are locked up in the back of the mall. There's like a warehouse in the mall where all the animals are just like in small pens. Uh, think of an elephant in a mall, you know what I mean? Like that's that's brutal to think about. But like the seal, the seal has like this tiny pool and the water is completely green. Now it could be that the, he actually does need green water, right? For all I know. But to me, it, it just seemed like visually, it's like the worst tank you could swim in, right? And again, it's not a dark story. It does not shy away from the darkness at, at parts, but it's, it is Disney. Right, so it, it's as dark as it possibly can be, uh, and I do love the the aspect of all the animals are CG and all the animals can talk, so they all talk to each other, and it's uh, it's pretty nice. But and, and again, because it's based on a real story, they can't go crazy with it. Uh, there is a, of course an ending that is predetermined, but it's a good time if you like CG animals talking to each other, and you don't mind to cry a little bit. The one and only Ivan, it's good stuff. Eight out of ten. But here we go, baby. The two ten out of tens, which nobody. Nobody's talking about, nobody has seen, uh, actually one of them people have seen, but the first one is the horror film, Anything for Jackson. It's funny because when we looked at this movie up, I made the joke that it must be a documentary about Michael Jackson, um, it would be about his plastic surgeon, right? Anything for Jackson. But <laughs> what it actually is, is a satan sa satanic um, ritual. I mean, I, the less I say, the better, which is why I wanted you guys to just jump in. 98% on Rotten Tomatoes, right? The more I say, the worse it is. So, please. And the other movie is In and of Itself, which is a Hulu exclusive, which is a one-man show. Again, if you could stop this right now and watch those things, that would make me more happy than anything. But if not, here's the cell. So, anything for Jackson is a elderly couple who are trying to bring back their grandson, Jackson. Now, I won't tell you how they do it. But let's just say it's not good. <laughs> it's funny because the movie starts, the first minute is like the most boring minute you could think of. And literally minute two, you're like, you're you're in, you're in it. And both of these things that have 10 out of 10, both have one thing in common. And that's the, they have everything. To be a 10 out of 10, you either have to be perfect in what the one thing you're doing, right? So if an action movie is a 10, that means the action in that film is better than most anything else. But if you're gonna do everything, that everything has to be extremely good. And that's what both of these done. So anything for Jackson, because it's a horror film, features everything in horror. So genres, you know? So there's like some exorcism stuff in there. There's there's like, you know, there's gore. There's not jump scares, but like shocking moments. In my chair, I went <sighs> like three times at least, okay? There's like, you know what I mean? There's like hard to watch, like, body stuff it has everything it literally has everything the one thing that could hold it back is its small budget and it's one of the reasons nobody has seen it it also has like unknown actors which to me is better if you don't know these people it allows you to get into the story much more and uh that's all i'll say about anything for jackson again 98 percent on Rotten tomatoes you, you cannot go wrong with it trust me if you love horror movies anything for jackson within 10 years will be known as a cult classic and um, so yeah, I don't think it's gonna explode like hereditary or whatever because it is small, but man is it good, okay, seriously. And uh, the other one, the other one is even more complicated to talk about in and of itself. I do not watch theater plays, um, I, just by virtue of age and you know preference and whatnot. But this is by far the best one I've seen. It's also probably the only one I've seen, but that's what it is. It's a one-man show that played in New York for like 500 shows before COVID. And he edited it together. And he also added some stuff. So there's like some a little bit of animation, a little bit of cutaways, which I like. Uh, it's an hour and a half. And again, I showed you at the beginning, 100%. 
and it has 8.3, which would put it above, you know, thousands of films. And, okay, oh, that's what I wanted to say at the beginning. Magic. Magic is very important here. Human Planet showed me magic in the sense of, of course, it's natural magic, as you can see, but it's also camera magic. There are some shots in this series, what you're watching right now, that I could not believe, I, I could not understand how it got done. They, they go in, inside a fruit, inside a fruit, I'm like, how? How is that even possible? To me, it is true magic. And in and of itself is a show, is a one-man show, but it does have everything in the sense that it has a little bit of stand-up comedy, is actual acting, storytelling, and magic, as in magic tricks. But what it does, and the reason it's a 10, and the reason it's so well regarded, is it's human magic. It leans on empathy. It leans, of course it has the tricks. He does card tricks, he shows you some magic stuff. But when it comes to the human magic, it, it's very hard to explain unless you see it. It, it, it like blew me away and uh, I have a perfect example of which because at the start of the show they come up to this board which has you know 200 white cards and on every white card it's written I am and then something underneath so I am a ninja right I am an introvert I am an artist I am a leader right and you're supposed to pick out the one that represents you of course a lot of people trolled and a lot of people took a joke answer like I am a ninja no nobody nobody's a ninja and this plays into the human magic part. And I thought about it, right? Which card would I pick? And this is where we slightly get into spoilers here, but it, it goes with what I am. By the way, surrender. Okay, there's two lessons in life that I will teach. Um, one is, you know, crying is good. Just, just in general. Just especially men. But we're not going to talk about that. But number one, the number one lesson I could, I could teach you, which I learned from Toy Story, uh... Dang it, what's the name of it? But it's a short. It's not the Halloween short, it's the other one. Damn it, I should have looked it up first. But uh, you can find it on Disney+. Plus. Look up Toy Story Shorts, and it's uh, the toy that time forgot, something like that. It's about prehistoric toys. Point is, it's surrender. Surrender is the second best lesson I could teach anybody on Earth that I learned. You must surrender to what you do. Whatever it is, you must allow it to give you what it wants to give you without your preconceived notions. It's very important. And it's, it's hard to do because you nitpick or, you know, if you don't like dramas and you watch a drama, you'll be turned off right away. You'll be sitting in your chair. Oh, I got to watch this stupid drama, right? If you don't like comedies, you don't like horror films, you'll, you, you will go in already predisposed to not liking them. But if you surrender to whatever it is, whether it be a nature show, a freaking movie about CG animals talking, or in this case, a one-man show telling you stories and showing you magic tricks. And you allow yourself to be taking along the ride. That's when magic can happen. And that's when 10 out of 10s come out. And that's when you will see stuff that changes your life, you know? So, very important. So, so people pick out a card. I am something. And I was thinking to myself, like, what I would pick. And, by the way, I would probably pick a joke one I would I would be the kind of guy who would pick I am a ninja but here here's what I wrote it down man. okay so I would pick out I am introvert I am dancer I am gamer I am cinephile I am comic book reader I am wrestling and combat fan I am emotional I am comedic I am animation evangelist and those are the big ones so right I, I am not just one thing but if I had to break it down it would be uh, I am a passionate visual artist lover visual arts lover if you had to break it down right because I, I everything i love all these things equally if not you know and passionate positive as a class so right you have a dungeon and dragons you have chaotic good chaotic neutral um you know lawful good whatever to be honest my class would be passionate positive i know it's not a class i know it doesn't exist but it, if i could force it that that's what i am and the crazy thing is, for this channel, for this show, for what I do on, on live streams and, and everything, what I actually want to be, this is the dream, this is the goal, this is everything to me, for you guys, is I want to be, I am a funnel. I know it sounds stupid, but that's really 
that like I, I literally why I believe I am here because I love all these things more than anybody I know which is which is right I mean it is true I love games and you know animation and film more than anybody I know not more than anybody just more than anybody that I've personally met and it's I mean I love it because it is my life right but there is there is that anyway it's something to be shared point is and so I am a funnel, so I am the big side. I take it all in. I take all these amazing shows and films and, uh, you know, animation and combat and comic books. I take it all in. And again, I only take in the best. And the goal of this, this show, no matter how long it is, every day, is to funnel all of that and to not waste your time in the same way I don't waste my time and to give you the best of the best. I watch the best, I show you the best of the best. It really is that simple. And that's the goal. That's what I want to be. Who is Alex Stories? He is a funnel. A funnel of things that is both beautiful and uh, worth um, experiment, experiencing. Like straight up. So hopefully the goal is one day I could just start a video and be like, guys, I saw these two movies. They're masterpieces. Go now. Watch them. That's it. And then you literally click out the video 15 seconds in, right? That's the goal. But until then, I'll keep on doing this, where I, I do talk about them, I do go into some slight spoilers, just so that, you know, we're all on the same page. So, the movie update is going well. Tonight, I'll, I'll do a heavy hitter, because that's the beauty. I, I haven't done heavy hitters yet. So I've done anything for Jackson. I've done the Mean the Only I Haven't, and of course, in and of itself, which again, I can't recommend enough. Human magic here. I added it here with the Greenland. So we still have all of these to do, including all the big, big nominees. The big ones that are supposed to be 10, right? The one and only Ivan is not supposed to be a 10. I put it here because it was a guilty pleasure and I wanted to watch it. Same thing for anything for Jackson. A horror movie, for a horror movie to get a 10, has to be extremely special. And those are very, very rare. As 6.5 on IMDb, which is, in relative terms, 8.5. 6.5 for a horror movie? is like as good as you can get really so so yeah so we'll do a heavy hitter tonight i'm thinking um damn it it's one of these two it's minari or nomadland because these are two of the biggest hitters that's where they're number two and three uh, nomadland extremely cool is that the director of this is the director of the eternals from marvel the upcoming gods film it has like angelina zoli uh salma hayek crazy actors you would not think in Marvel and apparently she had the best pitch of them all so she went to Kevin Feige the big boss of Marvel and she's like good look I want to make the Eternals I made No Man Land so I got proof that I'm like a masterpiece director and this is my pitch and that's what we're gonna see so I cannot wait for the Eternals super excited and Minari is just a good uh, a good uh, just a good drama apparently so you know what No Man Land okay so for the first time I'm actually calling what I'm gonna watch um, so yeah, check it out if you want to. We'll talk about it tomorrow. As always, we'll finish all of these before the end of the month. And yeah, and that's on top of everything else. The Expanse and a, a Perfect Planet and whatever else I'm doing. So until next time, thanks for your patience. But as always, the best of the best is all I will ever show you. Love you guys. Until next time, love and respect. Peace.